Hi everyone, um, thank you for tuning in to watch our video. Um, my name is Sana Majid and I am a tutor for med school tutors. Um, so I am currently a first year uh, resident. I am a prelim at uh, Beth Israel in internal medicine and next year I'll be starting my radiology residency at Brigham and Women's um, in July. And um, I've been with MST for several years now, I think three years, um, as a tutor and as um, one of the participants in sort of our webinar series um, to help reach a broader audience. And um, today what we're going to be talking to you about is how to succeed um, in step three and how to study for step three during your intern year. So I'm going to cover a lot of different topics during this webinar. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the structure of the exam, what you should really be um, focusing on in terms of your studying, um, when to take the exam during your intern year um, or during the rest of your residency may depend based on your specialty of choice, um, the best resources to study for the exam, um, as well as what topics you should be studying and what you should be focusing your time on. And finally, just a few tips and tricks, things to avoid, things, mistakes not to make, um, and just general, general big, big picture things. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started um, in talking about the structure of the exam. So step three, as many of you may already know, is a two-day exam. So the first day they focus on what they call foundations of independent practice. Um, so this has six blocks of 40-ish multiple choice questions. So this is much more similar to what you saw in step one, step two, um, USMLE exams. And what is different about this day is that they focus on, as I said, foundations of independent practice. There's a lot more biostats. There's a lot more um, sort of big picture ethical, social sciences, communication, interpersonal skill questions on this day. Not to say there's not any basic science, not to say there's not any medical um, sort of diagnosis and management questions, because there are, but there is definitely a significantly higher proportion of the biostats, the ethics um, on this first day of the exam. So that's sort of the first six, six blocks, 40 question, typical sort of exam. The next day is what they call advanced clinical medicine. Um, so for this day, this day takes about nine hours, um, which is a lot. So they have six blocks again of multiple choice. These are, I think, 30 question blocks. So it's shorter blocks, but there are six of them. And they're lasting 45 minutes a piece. And then after you complete those six blocks, you have these case simulations. And we'll get a little bit into what the case simulations are exactly. Um, but there are 13 case simulations where you basically are presented with a patient, a little bit of history, and then you sort of create your own adventure in terms of what labs, what tests, what diagnostic workup you want to do. So that's sort of the big picture of how to do it. One tip that I will recommend sort of right off the bat if possible, based on your schedule, I would really suggest trying not to do these exams on consecutive days. The first day is really exhausting, um, and then by the time you get to the second day, to sit down and do six more blocks of multiple choice questions can be really draining. Um, so just to keep that in mind when scheduling. As far as when to take this exam, um, it really depends based on your specialty. So a lot of the surgical subspecialties, peds, psychiatry, etc., a lot of those people, as well as prelims, most prelims take this exam in their first year. So during intern year when you're close to more generalized medicine. Internal medicine residents, some take it first year. At different programs, they take it second year. It really just depends on the culture of the program. Um, but what I will recommend is some people like to take it, what I've heard from many of my students is they like to take it, if they're not in internal medicine, as close to fourth year as possible, so pretty soon after they graduate, because you still have a lot of the general medicine. If you're going into a very specialized field, sometimes you lose a lot of the really detailed medical practices that you knew as a medical student. So worth considering. Having said that, I think that you know the more time you spend in residency, the more medicine you'll be doing for most people, so just depends on what your goals are. I will say in terms of when to schedule the exam within the year, this is pretty self-explanatory, but try to find a block, a four or five week stretch where you're a little bit 
better compensated to be studying. And studying doesn't mean the classic eight hours a day that you were doing for step one. Really what I think will be necessary is maybe one to two blocks a day, give yourself an hour or so to review those blocks. So really probably two hours of studying a day is what most of my students do is what I was doing for a four to five week stretch. And so that really I thought was more than sufficient for myself and was more than sufficient for most of my students. And to be honest, may have been a little bit of overkill. So try to find a good stretch in your year when you'll have that um, and be able to dedicate that time. The big resources to use for step three are, you guessed it, you world, you world, you world, you world, you world. Um, that's really the number one resource that people use for step three, and mostly because it's just the most effective one. There's nothing as good as you world as far as the questions go, and you really don't need much else. Just by doing you world alone and reviewing some of the fundamentals from your rotation, um, I think will be more than enough to make you pass, and most people will do significantly better than they expect for less time that they put into the studying. So you world should be your number one resource. What is a little bit different about this exam is the emphasis on statistics. Um, as I mentioned, that first day there's a pretty high proportion of statistics, um, as well as the ethical questions too. So UWorld has a dedicated bio stats for step three, and they walk you through, you know, really going back through the basics, sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, really working through those equations and just doing them over and over and over again is um, very important because that's it's free points. Um, free points that you can get and score well. So focusing on a lot more bio stats than maybe you're used to doing for the step one and step two exams. So a lot of that. And then what's very unique about this exam is the, C, um, the cases, so the CCS cases. So these are the 13 cases that you're going to see when you first take the exam, or that's, rather it's during the last part of the exam. So what happens in these cases is you're, you're presented with an HPI, so 47-year-old woman walks into the office with blah, blah, blah. And then you get a little bit of family history, social history, etc. And from there, you have to say, okay, how worried am I about this person? Do I need to do anything emergently? Do I need emergent vitals? What parts of the physical exam do I do? And you're putting in these orders. So if you want a CBC, you order a CBC. If you want a TSH level, you order those tests. And they're all coming back in real time as you're sort of working through these steps. The important things about that is to really simulate the CCS cases because there's really just nothing else like it. So to do the UWorld cases, I believe UWorld has somewhere on the scale of 40 to 50 cases that they allow you to sort of simulate the exact same situation as they do on the actual NBME exam. And so it takes some time. Those cases are not rapid fire work through in like two minutes. They take a good seven, eight minutes per case. And then to read through the answers, to read through the sequence of um, events that you were supposed to go through things in, it'll take probably I would say took me about a good half hour to get through the review for each case. So that is one of the most time consuming portions of preparing for this exam, but the most useful because once you do five cases, you have a good sense of, okay, now I know what their sort of structure is of this different part of the exam. And then just practicing actually, you know, diagnosing these cases. What I will say is most of the cases, you'll have a good sense of what the diagnosis is from the history alone, but it's important to sort of have a broad differential and order everything you would for other things on your differential. If you think it's appendicitis, don't jump straight away to lap appendectomy. What you should do is get the CBC still, get the DMP still, still do the ultrasound, still do the CT if you can't do an ultrasound. Do the whole workup that you would typically do even if you already know the diagnosis because the presentations are very classic. They don't try to trick you. Um, but just go through the steps. They just want to make sure you know the classic steps in working a patient up and what you should be thinking about when you're actually in the hospital or on the wards. 
And then just small tips for the cases. Make sure you remember to do the things that sort of sometimes just happen magically in the hospital, like putting in an IV. We have our nurses who amazingly do this for us, and we don't even think about it when we actually go in to see patients during intern year. Um, so really just making sure that you have that in your head and say, okay, I still need to order vitals for every however many hours, and I need to actually put in, oh, peripheral IVs, etc. So making sure you're accounting for all of that as well. And then other big picture things, really, I would say just carving out a little bit of time for a four-week period um, is really all you need to do. Find a stretch, look at your schedule ahead of time, ask your program if you're able to get your schedule for the whole year. I know programs are very variable as to what your flexibility is and if you know what your schedule will look like. Um, but try and get a sense of a four-week period where you have a lighter schedule, can carve out two-ish hours a day um, to just do some U World, or even, you know, if things are slow at work, just flip through some U World on your phone. And then really where the money is is to spend time on these cases and really go through the U World cases because that is the one thing that's really unique and unlike anything you've ever seen before. A lot of the multiple choices, similar to what you've seen on step one, similar to what you've seen on step two. And of course, if you ever get stuck, need help, or um, need a little bit further direction, feel free to reach out to us at MST. Um, we have a lot of tutors who have been doing this for many years and know more than me, more than all of us. Um, so feel free to reach out and we're happy to sort of guide you in, um, in preparing for the exam too. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and we hope this was helpful.